Hello and welcome to uh, this brief presentation on how to succeed at interviews. My name is Kieran Hurricane. I'm managing director of a training firm called H Training. And what I'm going to do today is just give you a whistle stop tour of what's required to succeed at interviews. Okay. Now, there's a number of different levels at interviews, depending on whether you're a graduate, you could be a more senior person, you could be pivoting into an industry you don't know about. But generally, the process is the same, right? There can be competency-based interviews, which is where you have to demonstrate your ability under a certain example. Um, and in addition to this, some people can use kind of, you know, more simpler terms, just kind of getting to know people, bringing to resumes, which are, are typical of kind of more entry-level ones. So let's jump into the content here straight away, okay? So in case you haven't watched any of my other videos um, for... Cork County Council um, the library service which we're very delighted to have asked us to collaborate with them on the Work Matters project. Um, my organization H Training we've, we've been heavily involved in the area of career development for the best part of 30 years okay we work with candidates from graduate level to middle management right up to kind of senior and C-level um, business owners both in the area of leadership development um but also career services so what that does is it, it positions us uniquely to understand what organizations are looking for and in addition to this to understand what the message people need to deliver to these organizations okay i regularly talk with business owners and they they explain to me the variety of frustrations they have around the different work that they're doing okay so hopefully this will give you a better kind of an idea of how you can um, let's say support yourself to get where you want to go and to stand out with these people that little bit better. Okay, so what I'm going to talk to you about is just very basic. What is an interview? It's important to understand this, right? Because there's some key information here that will impact on your performance. The typical challenges, we're doing this quite a long time. It's interesting to me how people often come and they feel like they're they're the most nervous candidate ever or the only person who maybe freezes or goes blank in an interview. We see it all the time. It's very, very regular if you're somebody who struggles with it in that re regard. And our purpose really is to stand out in an interview. Okay, how do you separate yourself from everyone else? You do this by understanding your edge, your edge being your competitive advantage. And the other part that I want to talk to you about is managing nerves. It's a very common challenge. It comes up quite a lot and it is a difficult arena. Okay, so there's a performance element. So we'll talk about that as, as we get into the content a little bit more. So beginning here with the interview and looking at it in very simplistic terms, an interview is a transaction, okay? You have a skill set, you have an ability, okay, that the organization you're interviewing with requires, right? In that sense, what you're trying to do is communicate your ability or your aptitude to do the role in question. This is very simple. OK, now, a lot of the time there's this kind of, I suppose, maybe perhaps in our culture, we can have this kind of hierarchical attitude. People on the interview board can seem like, you know, they have great authority over us. Yes, they're going to be making a decision that will impact on your life. But what I would encourage you to try and view it at more is a collaboration. OK, and, and thinking of it as a, a, a transaction or as an exchange really allows you to do that. The interview board sets out their criteria. Here's what they're looking for from their candidates. You then communicate your ability in line with that criteria as best as you can. Be careful within this that you don't get too bogged down in biographical information, things about your resume, which I'm going to talk to you about shortly. Okay. I mentioned this um, just a moment ago. An interview is a competition or a, sorry, a performance. Okay. Now, what that doesn't mean is that you go in and pretend to be something you're not. There's this sense I get from a lot of people as well, too, that, you know, an interview arena is a very disingenuous place where you're asked, you know, people who are better kind of salespeople than other people are going to have a better chance. What I mean by performance is if you're good at something, right, it's incumbent upon you to communicate that as matter of factly as possible. OK, or as impactfully as possible. And we also want to do it 
in, in a relatively short time, sp time span. The duration of interviews varies, you know, dramatically depending on levels and depending on kind of the industry you're in. They can go up to 45 minutes. I know that Amazon um, have interviews that last an entire day, right? You, you, you're going through a series of different people. So it depends on the format that you're doing. Some of them could be around the 25, 30 minute mark. Okay, that is still a small enough window to fit an entire career and an entire skill set into communicating to someone. Okay, so that's where the performance element comes in. A competition, let's be very clear about this. This is about selecting the best candidate for the role. Okay, in this vein, we need to understand a number of questions, which I'm going to pose to you shortly. But why do you think you should stand out over someone else? Okay. Can you be very explicit about that? This is an important facet. Um, and the last thing really is, is a pitch. So what, what's a pitch is kind of, here's why you should pick me. Here's why I fit the criteria and why I would be the most suitable person for the role. Okay. Again, these are all very simple um, elements. And what I want to do is kind of boil it down into those elements to, to help you best understand how you can exceed and how you can do your best in a given situation. Okay, so the next part of this then is looking at our edge. This is about competition, as I've mentioned already. Okay, and what will help you in competition is answering these questions. In a competition, you need to be better than the other candidate, okay, to finish on top or panel, right? Um, now, better is a bit of a subjective word. One interview board will think somebody is, is a certain way, another interview board will think someone is, is a different way. Part of the frustration that I've had over the years, because I train not only interviewees, but also interview boards, is I suppose the lack of standardization across the process. While we can have things like a competency-based framework, which seeks to standardize, a lot of people will come to the table and they'll bring their own take to this, which tends to muddy the water a little bit. People want to put their own take on it. Um, now, this is a challenge, right? Now, that said, that's not something we can control. What you can control is what you're communicating. And that's really the area I would encourage you to focus on as much as possible, okay? That's the one variable that we, we, we do have the opportunity to influence. And these two questions here, why are you better? And in what way are you better? Are very, very important. So for example, if I'm hiring for a sales role, I'm gonna get a lot of salespeople Right. If you're going in there and saying, well, I have experience as a salesperson, that's why you should hire me. You're not really doing a whole lot to distinguish yourself from the rest of the field. Now, if you do go in there and say, I have a lot of experience as a salesperson across a range of different industries. I've been in you know, medical devices. I've been in pharma, but I've also been in software that can help distinguish you. So what we're doing there is we're highlighting what's unique about your experience as opposed to just saying, here's my qualification. Why this is important is that I can learn that on your resume. I just have to read your CV and I know the answer to that, okay? So this is that bit more comprehensive. We're trying to do, um, we're trying to just kind of see how we can color that experience or color what it is you bring to it, okay? So in addition to this, there's a number of other factors that we look at in what way could probably be ex explained a little bit more in depth if we look at it this way. Now, I want to manage the time in this regard because you know we don't, we don't have a load of time for this video, but just to kind of look at it, the first two words within that, right? I can understand by looking at your CV, your biography, your resume, okay? But that information is all available to me there. The interpersonal ability and the motivation, this takes a little bit more probing, right? This is why we have interviews. If the interview was decided on your experience in education, we just need to read CVs. What interviews do, and I've heard people chair interview boards, I sit on interview boards myself and I, I hear a lot of the chairs say, we want to find out who this candidate is, okay? So who is this guy? What's he gonna bring here, right? And some of the questions that they would ask that chime with that are, how does he communicate or how does she communicate? What is, how would they communicate under pressure? Are they innovative, enterprising, solution oriented? Can they be decisive? Okay, so there's quite a lot involved in this. 
getting back to the experience part of this, there, there's kind of a hierarchical approach that we have had to recruitment in Ireland, kind of, you know, going back really to the beginning of industry here, whereby you serve your time and you're rewarded accordingly. This has really been turned on its head a lot in recent years. And what we have more so now is this kind of blend whereby experience is helpful, but it's not the, the, the kind of top criteria anymore. You, people who are experienced in a certain role definitely have an advantage. It used to be the advantage, but this is something that has changed, okay? We need something more. In addition to this, I do see a lot of people leaning quite heavily on their educational ability. Um, education is a great privilege and it's a real advantage, but there are pockets of industry where there's, there's a pushback evidence, particularly kind of around graduates, people coming out with qualifications and, and you know, maybe a bit of a dissatisfaction in certain walks of the private sector with the quality of graduate that organizations are receiving. So that that in essence informs a lot of the competency-based approach, right? And, and again, it's getting back to that who, if you're good at communicating with people, navigating difficult situations, are you good at having uncomfortable conversations okay there is a great demand for particularly managers or supervisors to do that if you are how can you demonstrate this okay i had a difficult conversation with an individual around their performance it had been ongoing we cited it a number of times before they didn't seem to be getting the message you know this really needed to be addressed i managed to communicate this to my team member without breaking our relationship okay so in other words, I wasn't too aggressive, I wasn't too forceful, but I did communicate the message. This type of thing really helps you to stand out. And in my own experience of recruitment and, and the various organizations that I've kind of managed some smaller recruitment initiatives for, this would be something that I would highlight as my preference because it, it tells me so much more about the candidate than simply the resume, okay? If you're resilient, if you're a communicator, if you have emotional intelligence, that covers such a broad gamut of what you'll be involved in doing in a workplace, everything from leadership, um, you know, team management, overcoming obstacles, being flexible in the face of adversity. There's so, so much within that. So to unpack it in this and via examples will really help you to stand out, okay? And the last one here is kind of motivation. A lot of people can come into interviews and, and there, there's people who, you know, do it a lot. They bat their eyelid at the interview board. They say all the right things. They sound very, very convincing and they get the role and they feel that, well, I've done my job now, okay? That's something that I see increasingly being looked at. How will this person sustain their motivation? Right? What motivates them and why? Can you give a flavor of that, okay? Some people are motivated by challenge and it is something that I have seen Um you know some recruiters really enjoy and some senior managers really enjoy as well okay so that's that's kind of just generally around the criteria another thing that we we can lean on here within the interview is the star technique very simply the star technique is four letters that allows you to frame an example you give the interview board around various work that you were involved in so give us an example of you as a leader, give us an example of a time where you gathered information, analyzed it and made a decision, right? What that really is, is storytelling, right? And what the STAR technique allows you to do, because you're delivering this verbally, it allows you to track your position in the story that you're telling, okay? The first part of this, the S is the situation. I always describe this as the opening scene in the film. Who was involved? When was it? We don't want to go back too far, you know, unless it's outstanding. But I would, I would typically keep it in the four to five year um, time range. Who was involved? And a really important facet of the situation is what was the central conflict? What some people do when they're asked to demonstrate their ability is they end up describing a process, okay? So, for example, if you're an, an engineer and you're looking to, you know, get something happening with a development we went through the processes the, you know the planning permission there was part eight all this kind of stuff that's a process you're describing it's how you operated within the process that is the bit the interview board want to know so by describing a process or a procedure what you do is you take the focus off yourself 
keep in mind, you're at the center of the process, okay? You're the subject of the interview. So it's important for you to keep the light shining on yourself throughout, okay? The second part of this is your intention. This basically is a sentence based on what was going on here in this situation. I wanted to deliver on the work, alleviate the conflict, deliver despite the challenges we had around resources and a range of other criteria attended to that, okay? Now, the most important part of your competencies will be your actions. This is basically what you did, okay? How can you demonstrate the actions that you took? So we want verbs. I went, I facilitated, I arranged, I prepared, I reviewed, okay? Physical things that you did, okay? How and why you did them then, gives us a window into your thinking. It expands a little bit on the kind of information that, that you've given. You know, I knew this person was more senior to me. They could at times be a bit aggressive. I needed to manage this communication because I didn't want the situation to escalate. So I spoke to them in a low tone. I was careful what I said. I acknowledged their distress or anything attendant to that. OK, so that's really the meat of it is the actions in the situation. What was it you were doing? OK, and the result then is the outcome. We have a slight tendency in this country to be just that bit too humble. Um, I see people leave awards off their CVs. I see them give credit for work that they've done to other people. There's this kind of, you know, it's admirable to try and kind of be humble. But in an interview, you know, are you selling yourself short? Make sure with the result, if there was a measurable saving and efficiency, money, manpower, um, that you say it. And if someone gave you a pat on the back or someone highlighted your work, make sure you're talking about that as well. Okay. So that's basically the interview process. The last part I just want to talk to you about briefly is nerves. You need to get in there and you need to communicate how good you are at a particular thing. What makes this challenging is that the outcome impacts you personally, okay? A lot of people look at this and they say, well, I'm able to present in front of a, a big team, but when it comes to an interview, I, I, I fall to pieces. Now, the reason for that is that when you're presenting to a team, the outcome, that variable, that extra variable, that is not gonna impact on you personally, Obviously, you know, it might impact on performance or something like that, but this is very understandable, okay? An interview is not a natural arena. And what I mean by that is it's constructed. It's an environment we have to see how you'll respond. You also are effectively being judged. There are people sitting there to see if you're suitable for the role, okay? I don't, when I see people very, very nervous in interviews, it's not always a, a bad mark for me, Um if one thing it highlights that a person is interested in the role, it shows that you care, okay? But that said, it needs to be handled and not everybody will have the same opinion as me, okay? Um, you know, interviews can produce adrenaline, but how can you make the nerves work for you? Can you put that adrenaline into action? Can you kind of deliver it? Can you be passionate about what you're talking about? Remaining in control of what's going on throughout, okay? And we do this by breathing, Make sure that either you have a bottle or a glass of water with you so your mouth doesn't go dry. And just keep using the touchstone of what your competitive advantage is. Why am I being, why am I going for this interview? What is it I can offer the board, okay? If you have that there, that will really, really support you in what you're doing, okay? So um, just a little bit of psychology around this, okay? Um, we have a mental self and we have a physical self. When we're nervous, okay, there's a primal element to that. What nerves and fear, and, and I suppose to a more progressed degree, anxiety are, it's a reflection of our survival instinct. We want to be safe, okay? And instances like this can be that bit stressful. It can be difficult and awkward to kind of manage. Um, and our bodies respond accordingly, okay? This is why you might feel butterflies in your stomach. Your shoulders might get tight. You might get the, the infamous sweaty palms. This is a kind of a, your body signaling that there could be danger or that there's something going on here. Now, what happens with this physical stimuli is our mind interprets it, okay? And very simply, we end up telling ourselves a story and ask yourself, what's the story I'm telling myself here? 
I often find with clients, if I probe a bit, it's not necessarily that um, I won't get the job because, and I've seen people try like, why am I so worked up about this? If I don't get the job, I recognize it's not the end of the world. Um, and I appreciate too, that may not always be the case. Some people can be under a lot of pressure to secure employment, but looking at this dynamic and what's going on, see if you can just identify the story that's going on. I see people assign a lot of their self-worth to the outcome of an interview. And, and I would really kind of encourage you to be cautious about this. This is not you as a person, right? This is about your suitability for a role, okay? You're delivering a message. And the, the bad news is that you, you may probably not get rid of the nerves, right? But what you can do is manage them, okay? I have a lot of experience in this myself. I used to find public speaking a very daunting task, and it's now something I do for a living, right? So I suppose I'm offering that in the sense that, like, it is possible to overcome this. If you breathe, if you recognize what you're telling yourself, and you try and maybe challenge the dynamic in your mind, okay? You can do this you can be successful, boil it back down to a transaction. I have information these people need to know and I'm going to deliver it accordingly, okay? I've used mindfulness a lot with clients in this. It, it is an ever-growing practice. Um, I, I could not recommend it enough. Um, mindfulness doesn't seek to change how you feel, right? Or it doesn't seek to stop you thinking. What it invites you to do is just to become aware of your experience. Now, that's a practice, okay? And oftentimes, I think we get stressed or we maybe get that little bit more anxious when we, we resist what's going on. Can you allow it to be there? Can you breathe into it? Okay, you know, I appreciate that's perhaps easy for me to say, but mindfulness will allow you to become more grounded and more settled within yourself. And I mean, even as you breathe slower, what that does is it, it will slow down your heart rate, okay? Which also your mind will interpret too, okay? And there's probably another subtle story it will tell um, based upon that, okay? I've put in a couple of um, links at the end of that. We can maybe include them um, in the description for this video. One is just basically Tara Brack. If you, if, you, if you search for rain meditation on YouTube, it will give you that. And the other one is for the guys at franticworld.com who do a lot of, um, you know, it's, it's all science-backed practice. Um, I have used this a lot with people and they, they find it quite um, helpful. So really what we're just kind of talking about here is um, the process you go through in being nervous in an interview. There, there's, there's more information on these kind of negativity biases and why we have them. It's really kind of a built-in survival mechanism. But, you know, coming back to this, what's your objective? Deliver a message about why you're so suitable. OK, this is what it all boils down to. Think about that question. And the last piece I will leave you on is say your reasons for being hired out loud. Practice talking about them. Say it once one way, say it again another way. What this will do, it, was, it will develop a flow. OK, it will allow it to be that bit more conversational. So you're not bombarding the interview board with kind of bullet points or monotone allow them to engage with you. I find it a lot easier to interview people who are engaging, right? As opposed to people just, people who tell stories and they bring you with them and they change their tone, okay? So if we can be of any further assistance, don't hesitate to get in touch. We're on htraining.net um, and we wish you all the very best um, in your interviews and thanks for listening.